Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's new episode of the Xbox Lunch Break Special. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And folks, we are here. It is April Fools. This is not a joke. We are going to give you 90 solid minutes of big topics with bigger opinions. I can't wait to get into it. And you know why I'm excited? Because not only is Fuzzy Belvedere will be with us momentarily. We have Game Pass Dad making his debut on this channel. Game Pass Dad, what's up, brother? I, you know, obviously I listen to you when you're on with Mav and Pong and the crew. Great to have you here. How the heck are you, man? I'm doing good, brother. It's good to be back. Good to, it's actually been probably about a year. I've been on yes. one time. Yeah, but one time before. <laughs> it's basically it's basically like a debut. I feel like I'm getting back into talking to Xbox, doing the podcasting stuff. Like for a while, I kind of focused on content elsewhere. But about a year ago, this month actually, I started being more consistent with being on FSP on Fridays whenever I can make it, and some of the other shows, and nice. kicking it with PTK Blam and Fuzzy and Pong over on Saturdays at the shop where it all got started for me with Xbox podcasting. So. Always good to be back and chopping it up with you guys about Xbox and just enjoying gaming through all the craziness. <laughs> well, it had this year has been crazy for gaming. Uh, it has been crazy for good and bad news. Uh, we're going to focus on the good stuff. Uh, we we are going to open up with the very controversial uh, article that was a, an opinion piece written by VGC, uh, one of their staffers. Uh, I know I've seen some. Um, early uh, comments about, well, it's one person's opinion. And I get all of that. But, uh, you know, I, I checked out uh, Friday's show, Fuzzy, and there was a lot of commentary about when you write something for someone under the banner of whatever it is, that banner is represented as the the speaking point, meaning that this is a VGC article. It is on uh, and available at VGC.com. Uh, Andy Robinson. Uh, listen, I, I I love the site. Uh, I have I have I know that I know that I get some pushback from some people. Like, boom, you're always saying that they're a good site. They're not a good site. Listen, uh, I like the way most of their writers do their job. Um, I do like Andy Robinson, even though he does not know who I am. I'm well aware of who Andy is and what he's done in the past. Um, but you know, again, that's perfectly fine. Uh, this is this is one of those instances, Fuzzy, where they got it wrong, and they got it wrong pretty bad, uh, as a matter of fact, when you consider that the story as an opinion piece, and of course people are allowed to have their opinions, was a lot of half-truths, because uh, if you read it, and we're not going to do it, because I'm not going to give them the click. Uh, I heard what Mad, Mav read it verbatim on the show on Friday, and one of the things that seemed to be left out of the conversation is, Xbox as an overall platform rather than we're, we're focusing on console sales and somehow Phil Spencer is responsible for killing those console sales and the brand, uh, according to VGC, when, yes, Fuzzy, they're in third place. Will they ever get out? Well, shit, I don't know. But I can tell you where they won't be in third place. What the end, when, when the end of the year happens uh, and we're talking about totals and what platform how much money did each platform make? They'll be number one. And they'll be number one by leaps and bounds, not even by a pinch. They won't be just beating PlayStation. They will be curve stomping PlayStation. And I don't give a shit because I don't, I mean, I have stock, but not enough that's going to matter. So I don't care if they make more money. I care as a consumer what they're doing for me and what, uh, what value my subscription service that I pay for monthly is valued at. And obviously to me, which is why I stay committed and, and subscribe is that it's worth well more than sixteen ninety nine a month. But Fuzzy yeah. Belvedere was hanging out with you, and we had a lot of laughs on Post Up Show. Um, Got to give Mello his credit. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the 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 quote with "There's not enough Jesus in Diablo Four" <laughs> nearly rocked me out of my chair. How the heck are you, brother? <laughs> oh, I'm doing great. Glad to be here with you guys. Uh, glad we have Game Pass Dad on here today. This is going to be an awesome show today. But uh, yeah, there's there's some you know odd news you'll see on Twitter, especially considering it's April 1st and stuff. But we got some good stuff to talk about. Um, I'm personally I'm excited for the concept of a Xbox handheld. Oh, um, put yes. a poll out there earlier today. I, did. I saw that. Yes. If, uh, we can guess the name of it beforehand, but uh, man. Yeah, just glad to be here. 
some some stuff to talk about with the uh, team Xbox and Sarah's post and man got a lot of interesting stuff to get into so let's do this all right so folks as you can see I finally remembered cuz then I'm an old man you got you got to give you got to give it up for me I I I remembered to actually record nearly 2 hours of footage uh I had an amazing fight with a rock golem today that I didn't record oh my god I wanted to punch myself in the face um, I killed a main character because they attacked me when I snuck into another area. Okay, so, uh, and I don't have this on tape because I could resurrect this person. I did mm -hmm. resurrect them, hoping that that would cool their jets, and I had to kill them a second time, so it wasn't <laughs> fun. Um, <laughs> and I hope that this doesn't damage my playthrough in some way. It was it was a gate that was locked. I had to go find out, the, I have to go find... I have to go do some 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 mission where there's an artist for a sculpture. I don't know if anyone's come across it yet. Yeah. And I had to get through the gates. And when I got there, the guy was like really snarky and nasty. Like, I'm not letting you through here. So there happened to be one of the ox carts going through. So I got on top or inside of the ox cart. And I just kind of went through. And I'm like, okay, I start taking off. I start booking. Like, we got through. <laughs> we get into like a little house. And some dude with a sword starts attacking the force. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to kill this guy. <laughs> so I kill him, and it's like, you can resurrect him. And I'm like, this is a, this is going to be important. If, if I could resurrect this person, it's going to be important. All right. So let me re reload my save. And it picks up right where I killed him. And I'm like, you see, Capcom, I love this game. But you, you got to have separate sa save slots. You, you got to bring that into, into fruition. But... Yeah, I'm having it. I'm having fun. This is my game of the year. Uh, it's so much fun. I look so much different than what I have on the screen here. I look like the, uh, the Black Knight uh, now. Currently, it looks amazing, and I'm in an area. This is the area that Pong Soul was talking about. I think on PM into PM, where it's dark and mm -hmm. it's like a fog, and you go to a you go to like, oh, should I jump down or is I'm going to jump to my death? And it's I got into this by accident. I told you, I told, I don't know if I told you guys a story. I came across a nest for a griffin and I looked down and normally I'd been like, yeah, you know, whatever. I've killed the griffin before, but then I looked in the, into the nest and there's a whole bunch of like loot. And I'm like, Oh, I got to get down. I got to kill this thing and take all this loot. And I sure <laughs> it took, it took about 15, 20 minutes to kill this, this some bitch, but I got him. So I, I got him. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, enough of the dragon's dogma. What, uh, you know, class 101. Sorry, I, I'm infatuated with this game. It is my game of the year. It's so it's so incredibly good. Uh, gentlemen, I, I do want to I do want to talk about the VGC thing, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it because I think that it's been beat to death. And I think that um, why I find these 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 hit pieces uh, a little dis uh, disturbing, if you will. And I want to bring into into uh, into the conversation Jamie Moran. Now, Jamie Moran has an incredible YouTube channel. He's an Xbox guy. He's been on my show. Uh, I think he was on the show two weeks ago, as a matter of fact, on Thursday with me and C-Money. And uh, he puts out a tremendous amount of tweets, really good stuff, very, very opinionated. But he doesn't do console wars. He just doesn't. Um, and he quoted the VGC article without giving them the ability for someone to click on it. That's what I did. Like I took a picture of it and I said, I'm not going to give you the link. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be a part of the problem. And uh, obviously the lead article for VGC was, I think Phil Spencer for, for, for so long cast as Xbox's savior may ultimately be remembered as the man who killed it. And obviously there's a lot of opinion that we're not going to go into. Cause again, I'm, I'm not clicking on it. But I think the way that Jamie broke it down is the way I want to kind of talk about this because um, if you compare one to the other, and I think we have to do that, right? You you can't really talk about Xbox without talking about PlayStation, Fuzzy, and you certainly can't talk about PlayStation without talking about Xbox. Now, granted, that conversation could be skewed, right? It could be uh, opinionated. It could be factual. It could be console war uh, bias based, and that's fine. However, you are going to have that conversation, but that's not what we're going to do here. Uh, I find it very, you know, like a, a very uh, pointed uh, opinion from VGC. And again, it is an opinion. It's one person's opinion. They're allowed to have it. But you are, as Andy Robinson, who is the runner, the, the showrunner, if you will, of VGC, could turn around and say, yeah, I don't know so much about this opinion piece because this, you know, this this is not really factual. 
there are some missing pieces here. And the missing pieces is where they talk about Xbox dying as a console brand when they just spent nearly $100 billion of the course of two publishers and all the investment in Xbox Game Pass. But somehow, you know, with certain, you know, journalists and outlets, Fuzzy, Xbox is dying, right? There's, there's, There's no hope for Xbox. So... This, what what Jamie Moran put down was very interesting. And he says, is this because Xbox recently, and he adds a couple of PlayStation points here, he's being pointed, closed down studios, canceled games, pivoted to gas, put out a VR headset that costs more than their console, and and now has abandoned it. Uh, what you just read wasn't Xbox, but no, no, let's talk about uh, th- about that stuff. And everything that he mentioned has everything that's been done this year for PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And I find it extremely odd that there is this consistent push. I mean, Mav, Mav himself mentioned it on FSP on Friday evening. I watched, I listened to that show today while I was cleaning, and you guys knocked it out of the park. And there is this inherent push to keep Xbox down. Now, yeah. I, I will say that, yes, they they have stepped on some rakes. And obviously, over the, right, right before the weekend, we had the thing with Hi-Fi Rush with Digital Foundry, where if you stand at this certain part and you wait for the camera to turn 47.3 degrees to the right, you can see that the shadows are better. But the performance is exactly the same, and everybody went apeshit. Uh, yeah. Yes, they do do some things that step on rakes. Obviously, the Pentiment thing comes to mind, but that's been fixed. Obviously, yeah. on PlayStation, it was running at 120 frames. On Xbox 60, there's no excuse for that. Shame on Bethesda, but they fixed it, so it's done. But still, a rake. Yeah. This 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 article is the sentiment of many journalists, not just this particular one for VGC. Let's talk about it, man. Well, I, I think the biggest thing when I when I think of Phil Spencer and I think of like early 2013, 2014 time frame, I don't think they remember how close Xbox was probably being or to being sold off or yes. closed or or whatnot. So to think that the moves he's made since then or are, are what's killing it or what will ultimately kill it off is, I, I wouldn't say ridiculous, but it is on the ridiculous side. It, it, it's silly to me because, you know, Matrick did the whole, you know, oh, we got a console for you if you don't like DRM and being online and all that stuff, which looking back at it, all that stuff we, we do on a regular basis and don't even second question it. It's like, oh, TV, TV, TV. How many people actually stream you know, Netflix or watch YouTube on their console at some point. Now, I'm not saying that that's your primary use for the console, obviously, but it's one of those things that a lot of people enjoy the fact that they can do that. You know, prior to smart TVs being as prevalent as they are now, it was a good thing to have those apps on there. But all of that aside, let's look at how they went from only having five studios to now having well over 40 studios, having an actual pipeline and roadmap. That's like the biggest thing that I don't understand why people just breeze over it. It's like Xbox actually has a roadmap of games that we can look yeah. forward to for at least the next five years. Like they have enough that would have a launch lineup that will rival any console's launch lineup. You know, yeah. if they're, you know, if you know all of the predictions are right as far as 2026 being that next gen console. Yeah. They, they at least have a, a pretty stout roadmap to kind of pick and choose from of what might be like cross generation games. But in any event, that next hardware will make the best out of those games regardless. Um, but all of that aside, it, it seems like they, a lot of the gaming media, whether it's because they grew up on PlayStation or they're you know accustomed to playing on PlayStation because they get their free codes there to do reviews and whatnot, and their ad dollars or you know f- kind of funded through anything PlayStation related, it, it feels like they've wanted Xbox out of the gaming space for forever kind of thing. It's like, oh, you know, Xbox is dead. And they've been saying that for almost 20 years and Xbox is a little over 20 years. So it's like, you know, I guess at some point they might be right, maybe in 2047 or something like that. But in the grand scheme of things, it it just feels like it's the box that they don't like. And I don't know if that's Bill Gates fault, you know, the, the old big bad Microsoft of the eighties and nineties or whatever, if that cloud is still looming over them and, you know, the association 
you know, guilt by association kind of thing. It's like, well, well, Microsoft was bad back then. So Xbox has to be bad. So I, I, I don't know if that's what's going on or if they just see that, you know, this big conglomerate being the, the purse strings behind Xbox is something that, you know, shakes them to their core type of deal. I mean, they did just clear the Activision deal not too long ago. So I can't imagine clearing the Activision deal and Xbox dying shortly thereafter. Like, even in a worst case scenario, let's say, you know, hardware doesn't move quite the same because of, you know, this this disjointed, you know, multi-platform, you know, going open store platform type of concept, uh, not necessarily catching on because, you know, Microsoft tends to do things earlier than sometimes maybe they should. Even then, I don't think you're going to see a death of a, a, a platform in that short of a time frame. Like it was more likely that the platform would have died with the, the whole DRM thing and how they handled the messaging than anything they've done since. Now, have they, you know, had issues with messaging over the years? Yeah, they've stumbled over a couple of things, tripped over their feet, but stubbed their toe a few times here and there, maybe stepped on a rake here and there as well. But in the grand scheme of things, some of the things we're hearing where they're talking about opening up the store to Steam or Epic given us access to games that normally would take either years to come to console or might not even come to console at all. That's an interesting concept to have. Yeah, sure. I get the, the, you know, disappointment that some may have with some of the games going to other platforms, but it, it, in the bigger picture, like, all right, let, let's be real now. Hi-Fi Rush went over there. It didn't do so well. And that was a yeah. test, right? Yep. So think about it. If that was the ultimate test and all of these PlayStation cats are like, well, we're getting Starfield next. Well, if you didn't buy Hi-Fi Rush, you ain't getting Starfield. Sorry. that That's going to be the end of the test because was it worth their dev time or their port time to put that over there and you didn't buy it? Well, then, yeah, hey, it, the same thing with Pendiment. If you didn't buy it, you pretty much sealed the fate. And I said this before when there was the whole rumor about the games going over there. I was like, every PlayStation person, if you really want these Xbox games on your platform and don't feel like buying an Xbox or, yep. you know, you know, admitting that you don't have that five thousand uh, dollar PC rig, you know, maybe you should buy these games. Maybe you should convince all of your PlayStation friends to buy these games, because if not, this test will be a very short one. And, you know, other than Sea of Thieves, I think that's going to be the case. Sea of Thieves might be that one which. In, in the grand scheme of things, uh, I, I think that might be the death more so of PlayStation's games as a service than Xbox itself, because if Xbox is putting games as a service there and getting that microtransaction money, which sure, Sony gets 30 percent of it, whatever. Same thing with the, you know, Call of Duty, whatever. But who's getting the 70 percent? That's the big question. So if that game does well over there, how well do you think some of your PlayStation gas games are going to do? I mean, they've already canceled a number of them, and the best oh, the looking best ones, one, by was, the way, yeah, <laughs> and and one of the best ones that actually released is mainly supported by PC. So you, you're not getting factions, you're not getting the uh, uh, Spider Verse game. Uh, who knows if you're getting that uh, Fortnite looking, you know, uh, Horizon game? Whatever the case may be, uh, I guess was it Fair Game and and uh, the the fast food delivery thing. Um, what was that thing called? <laughs> Concord <jiggly> hamburger. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you're getting those, and oh, oh, that's right. You're getting marathon, or at least possibly, unless Bungie, you know, survives the closing that they're, you know, that internal fire that's going in over there that no one seems to want to talk about either. Yep. I don't know. It it just feels like this ad, this this opinion piece, and and while I understand an opinion piece is someone's thoughts on the the matter. And it seems like some of the, the things they mention aren't they're thought out, but not completely thought out like the oh, instead of spending all that hundreds of millions of dollars or hundreds of billions of dollars on getting ABK, you should have put that into making 200 and some odd games. Well, you, you need studios <laughs> to make those games. Um, last time I checked, they went from five to, you know, a little over 17 or 23 or so. And, and it's like you're complaining about them getting those studios. but I don't even think those studios could put out that many games, even in a 10 year span. So what, however you look at it, I, I think Phil Spencer's decisions, while I may not agree on every last one of them, I think they've been to the benefit of the overall brand and to the shareholders, which I know us as gamers, we don't care what the shareholders think, but you know, that's who controls the purse strings to some extent. 
But in the grand scheme of things, I think he's been more of a benefit uh, given from 2014 on than what we could have had. And unless they had better messaging back in 2013, I don't think Xbox would have a better outcome to this day than what it has now. But that's just my two cents on it. No, I, I saw over the weekend there were a Game Pass dad. There were a lot of people calling for Donnie D to return, which is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, that guy has killed everything he has touched. He left PlayStation, went to Xbox, left Xbox, went to Zynga, killed that, uh, did a whole bunch of things. Um, no, we don't want Donnie D back. Bill Spencer, yes, I, I'm with you. I don't agree with all his decisions either. Um, and uh, look, at the end of the day, uh, they're not going to hurt the brand. Uh, have they hurt the brand? Well, we're going to get into that because Jez Corden on the Windows 2 podcast with, of course, Randall Thor 19, the man with a million, uh, had some uh, stuff that he got. You know, he got some information on some internal conversations, a town hall meeting that was happening regarding putting some games onto PlayStation and, what, and what, whether or not that did damage. Um, and we're going to get into that as well. But uh, Game Pass, Dad, you know, what's interesting about this article, and I saw somebody mention it in the chat, this comes on the heels of uh, Colin Moriarty. Obviously, you know, he has a big media company, just celebrated his uh, 300th episode. Uh, he, ha he does run a, a PlayStation podcast. He's a PlayStation guy, nothing wrong with that. Uh, the Iron Lords happen to be there, uh, uh, you know, uh, downtown in Manhattan, uh, which was great for their brand, uh, they're well deserving of all the success uh, that they continue mm -hmm. to get. But this is coming off of the heels of like Colin literally on his podcast saying less is more, meaning that he doesn't want more PlayStation games. He wants less, which I find to be ridiculous. Uh, anyone that says that is is a fraud. I'm sorry. Uh, and I don't believe that opinion. I don't know if he believes that opinion. I think he has to believe that opinion. Because like Fuzzy said, there is no roadmap. So when you start to put these things together and you see this opinion piece by a VGC uh, you know, uh, uh, member of, of their or their staffer, if you will, uh, yes, it is an opinion piece. But at the end of the day, it has to be okayed. Where Andy had to be like, yeah, let's run this. We understand why this happens, which is why I won't click on it. It's rage clicking that they're hoping for. Their yeah. numbers are down in some way. But I do find it when you, again, all you have to do, you don't have to be a mathematician, Game Pass dad. You don't have to be, uh, you know, have, have documentation that says that you're the best, you're the smartest guy in the room. You just have to look at 2024 of what has happened for PlayStation. And they literally came out and said, yeah, we don't have, off of coming off of a year that they had one console exclusive for the PS5 <laughs> and, and, and Spider-Man 2. Right. Are you sure that's not too many? <laughs> well, I mean, according to some, that is. That, that's just more than enough. And even though I liked the game, a lot of people didn't like the game. Yeah. And now this year, well, they were, this fall, instead of having a game that everyone may want to play, they have a console. And they right. have a, a a pro version aspect of games coming that they're probably going to charge everyone 10 bucks for. Um, And no first-party games. It's it's I'm just interested to get your take. We haven't talked in a while. I haven't you know, heard what you had to say about the, you know, the state of gaming and the state of the gaming media versus Xbox. This is another hit piece, obviously. And uh, it's one that, yes, I understand it's an opinion, but probably shouldn't have been published, in my opinion. What, what about yeah. you, man? What do you think? I mean, it's definitely a personal bias that um, I feel is getting a little out of hand. And when it when it comes to actually bringing all the money into publishing these articles, putting out the content, communicating, building a community, like definitely Colin Moriarty probably made a real choice about what direction he wanted to take before he said less is more. And he felt like that is what the most people wanted to hear. And that would get the most people continuing to listen to what he has to say. But then it just becomes a situation where if, if really we want less games, we only want one major game from Sony every single year then it's just it's literally just a famine mindset where or a famine situation where everyone's playing the same games and you don't have any variety where microsoft has 40 game studios and even if they're releasing four games a year and two of them are redfall and the other two are pretty solid experiences eventually you're gonna lose out like you're definitely at some point or from the jump without game pass day and date 
they're losing the value proposition immediately. And when when we're going through tough times, like I, economically, I think inflation, everything going on right now, everyone's feeling that squeeze in their wallet. And there's more competition for the dollar in your wallet every single day in your time. Um, I know Pong likes to say that a lot um, or something along those lines, basically. And me and him agree with that. Um, I feel like Xbox at the very core of its business right now is providing way more options, has a way better like value proposition through Game Pass, through its different platforms that it's providing. Whereas PlayStation's in a position right now where they're not trying to provide value, where my core philosophy around console gaming is that first and foremost, consoles should be the best bang for your buck when it comes to the availability and maybe not the price of the software itself because you get subsidized by the platform like you get a cheaper buy-in with the console but you get the most power for the lowest amount of money and you should have the biggest variety possible of games to play and saying that less is more is definitely a lot of coping with the current situation of things because if you look back at the playstation 3 era like PlayStation didn't blow, PlayStation 3 didn't blow Xbox 360 out of the water. Xbox 360 was outselling PlayStation until I I don't know exactly when the turning point was, but somehow PlayStation 3 really ended up on top. It was really towards the end. Yeah. It, was, it was towards the end and and and, and you know can, if you don't mind I'd like to add some context yeah. uh, to what you're saying. If folks is again I I don't care. I'm not making any money on these consoles if I'm Right, me neither. Them, they don't, but Game Pass that is onto something and why they took they they took the lead and they edged them out by a couple of million. Was Xbox had stopped making the Xbox 360, whereas oh. the PlayStation 3 was still being made in smaller form factors. Right. They kept iterating on the size of it and they kept selling it. And they kept selling it in countries that normally didn't buy these three, four, five, six hundred dollar consoles. And they kept on selling it when the Xbox 360 stopped. So they eventually, I mean, it's just, it's just mathematical, uh, you know. Uh, math simple math right they beat them out on the numbers right We're, which like worldwide but overall and thank you for adding the context i appreciate that because i i didn't i i need to go back and make sure i know it when i'm talking about it but essentially my point is that leading in from playstation 3 to playstation 4 playstation had to win back all that goodwill and they did because xbox fumbled hard with the yeah. xbox one generation we all know yes. it and it w we were in a tough spot. We were in a point where people who are diehard Xbox fans at the time were probably like, less is more. Me personally, I have to admit, like I bought an Xbox One. Like I've always been an Xbox person, but honestly, I was doing other things those times. There wasn't really anything keeping me home playing my games aside from like occasional like Call of Duty or Halo with my friends. But I mean, aside from that, I don't even think we didn't even really have good Halo at that point. But um, <laughs> basically, my point is that PlayStation 4 era, like Sony ran away with building goodwill and like ran away with the console war that generation. So now heading to current day, which another thing I like to point out is that Phil Spencer has been the head of Xbox and like it, the, his titles changed, but he's been in charge of everything and been promoted throughout that time and brought closer into the business over 10 years, which as a leader of a company, a CEO, like that's an amazing accomplishment. And maybe Jim Ryan would last longer if it wasn't for the 30 years, but it doesn't seem like he retired or it doesn't seem like he retired on his own accord necessarily, but we, we can't really speak to that. But basically Jim Ryan came in after all that goodwill and all of the choices that Sony is making, the reason why they were the last to adopt crossplay, the reason why they're the first ones to raise prices, the reason why they're bringing us products like the PlayStation Portal and like PSVR 2, that the market, well, I don't know what the sales numbers are on the Portal. People seem to like the Portal, but if that's all they, the only handheld option they have, I can see why people buy it, but it's still at a premium. Like Sony is at a point where they are collecting money off of the goodwill that they built. And that is what Jim Ryan was sent in to do. But the problem is that gamers obviously must not be buying into it as much or the it's costing too much to build these games and the market isn't responding to the point where the games are as profitable as they want them to be. So now we're seeing closures and we're seeing layoffs and we're seeing all the same problems that we see everywhere, which arguably, I think with the way things are today in general, we'd probably still see some layoffs, but, um, 
I do feel that Sony isn't in as strong of a position because every single time Microsoft proves that something is a good idea, it seems like they're following suit. But at this point in time, they're beyond, they're behind the eight ball. They're closing down studios. They don't have the money to compete to acquire or fund studios as deeply as Microsoft can, where now Microsoft has been bringing Xbox closer to its core business. Um, like I'm pretty sure that uh, his Phil's current title is literally, he like directly reports to, he's always directly reported to Satya, but right now it's a more core position in the business itself. And we're at a point where Xbox is, set up to deliver like like fuzzy said we have a set and solid roadmap we know what to expect when we're buying into the ecosystem and at this point in time like as far as for the next five to ten years there's no way xbox is ever going to be as in a difficult position as it was at the beginning of the last generation so with the work that phil has put in like i feel like it's just very disingenuous to sit here and say he's a failure just because they're trying new things. But the fact of the matter is like if Microsoft wanted Xbox gone, it would be gone right. at the same time. Right. If Microsoft wants to put a console in your living room, they're going to do everything they can to try and convince you. And we're, we're lucky that at this point in time that their strategy has been to provide that value proposition, or at least I feel like they understand it more, or at least Phil does. Cause Phil first and foremost, and at one, no point in time in that, hit piece that they ever acknowledge the fact that phil is a gamer and you look at like the other articles or the other interviews that came out where he's talking about like potential handhelds and things like that and he's coming at it from a gamer's perspective he says what would i want as a gamer and that's he's thinking about the same things that we think about yes yep and that's the difference between like a phil spencer and a jim ryan jim ryan is there to collect all the gold and go fill Sony's bank vault so they can Scrooge McDuck with our hard earned money <laughs> all day long. Whereas like Phil Spencer also is there to get your hard earned money, but he's there to do it while providing entertainment and value and expand upon the platform that we have. And at this point in time, I feel like Microsoft is kind of following Nintendo's lead at this point because Nintendo, like another point I made Friday was like, look at Nintendo between 2012 and 2017 you remember the wii u generation there was like 13 billion wii u sold they were like nintendo was on the most on the ropes that we've seen in the last like decade decade and a half like but they literally innovated they pivoted they 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 relied on what they're good at and right now their software might be not as good as what it could possibly be but their hardware is on point and they're doing just fine so it proves that these things aren't irredeemable if you can find the nerve of the market and what they might be looking for. And I feel like everything that's happening, yes, people are angry about the the cross platform. We're going to get into that. I believe you said um, a little yeah. bit more, but I feel like at least the things that Microsoft is doing, like Game Pass, the reason why I'm Game Pass dad is Game Pass allowed me to try games that I n couldn't necessarily afford to buy every single game. Cause I, I got burned so many times on pre-ordering games and like the lat, like beginning of the, like during the Xbox one era, let's just say like I stopped pre-ordering games and it reduced the amount of games I would try because I didn't have any rental services. I didn't have any other ways to try games. So it's like, I would wait until they came out or I just wouldn't play games. And then when Game Pass came out, I was able to try new games again. I was able to play all the games I would probably buy anyway for my Xbox. And literally it's changed the way I played games and it's made me enjoy gaming more because of the value that it provides. So I feel like the fact that PlayStation, PlayStation's obviously struggling and less definitely isn't more. I much prefer having a roadmap and it helps me, <laughs> it helps me sleep well at night knowing that there's a direction that we're going in. I mean, good. I mean, what, what, what a way to start off the show. Uh, we have a total of seven, nearly 700 live viewers. We have, and again, I can, I can, now that I, the stats are available, we have 550 people watching on, on, uh, on YouTube and a hundred and nearly 150 people watching on uh, Twitter, which is pretty cool. Uh, I do send it there. I did, never had these stats in front of me. Well, now I do. So now I can say that we have nearly 700 live viewers. And of course, if you are finding the channel for the first time, 
I would greatly appreciate you consider subscribing. Uh, it would be awesome to see some new subscribers. We do have some super chats and some new channel members that we have to get to before we get to the next topic. But again, great way to start it off, Game Pass Dad and Fuzzy, with uh, you know talking about an article that did take the community by storm. Uh, there were a lot of big opinions on it. Uh, some I agreed with, some I didn't agree with, and I definitely did not agree with this take. Uh, and again, yes, it is opinion-based. I don't think it should have been published for the sake of it wasn't true. It's an opinion, but it's an opinion piece that's skewed, and there are a lot of a lot of important factors that are left out. So it's one-sided based on, you know, there uh, an inherent bias towards the platform. And I'm actually surprised that Andy Robinson, who uh, again runs VGC, would allow for this to hit print because I think that is it's rubbish. Uh, and again, I know someone in the chat. I don't want to mention names because you know we don't want anyone to get picked on, but. I do value free freedom of speech, fella. Uh, I was in the United States Navy, and I was a New York City police officer where I went back to my old neighborhood and policed that 21 years. So freedom of speech, super important for me. Uh, I don't know what you, where, 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 what point you were trying to make. But, yeah, this was a bullshit, pardon my French, opinion piece uh, to rage click everyone. And VGC is w supposed to be better than that. They really are. Andy Robinson runs a really good site. I like what they do over here. They definitely got knocked down a couple of levels for me because this is uh, uh, click baitery at its absolute finest, uh, and it's gross. And uh, I don't think it should even it shouldn't even been printed personally. But again, I don't run a company, and I know that they need clicks. And while this is you know anything hateful for Xbox, I suppose sells. Um, but let me catch up on the super chats, gentlemen, and then we will get right into topic number two because Sarah Bond putting out. Some cryptic tweets, uh, and uh, we're going to get into what she said, what she posted with what she said, and our opinions on what this could actually mean. Who is hashtag Team Xbox? Well, folks, I think that is us who she's talking to. We'll get that to that in a second. Uh, we have a new channel member, Shannon Winter. Thank you so much for rejoining the channel. We truly appreciate the outrageous support and uh, we, you know, pre appreciate you being here each and every show. Andre Doyle drops a very generous two dollar super chat and says, "Microsoft always surprising everyone is awesome indeed." And uh, this handheld thing that they have coming, and you've heard Phil Spencer saying that Polygon uh, interview, what he wants is exactly the kind of handheld that I want. And like Game Pass Dad said, he, they're innovating. They are pulling a page right out of Nintendo's book. Nintendo had they were half in, half out with the you know with the you know with the Wii U that failed right after coming off huge success with the Wii, and they had the Switch and the Switch has been dominating that hardware. Your cell phone from ten years ago probably has better hardware than the Switch, but they have figured it out and it's still making money. And this handheld that's supposedly on the way maybe even this fall is going to be a really really big deal for xbox and its gamers and it could it could invoke the younger generation who play on handhelds right you know they have to do something to get new customers you heard him say that specifically and this may be a way but we'll get all we'll get into all of that in a hot second uh Ultron Quake, who's been a channel member for seven months. Brother, thank you for the generosity. He says, new Halo update tomorrow looks fire. Is there? Oh, my God. I've been playing. I think I just crossed, what is it, 20 days? 20 days? Yeah, 20 days of Halo <laughs> Infinite. I, I'm addicted. Like, uh, they, I just can't stop playing it. And I am smoking these fools out there. I'm getting 20 kills uh, per game, and the old man still has it. And I'm not playing with bots, by the way. I'm playing with randos, and I'm holding my own, surprisingly enough. Uh, thanks so much for the update, Ultron Quake. I'm going to check that out after the show. Uh, we have Sith Lore, generous friend of the program, drops an outstanding $5 super chat and says, What a morning. I got my Dreamcast mini pre-order, a PlayStation admitted defeat. <laughs> And just waiting for my <laughs> GTA 6 beta to download. <laughs> that's, that's really good stuff. I love it. That's good stuff. Obviously, it's the April Fools. Don't pay attention to any news, but I did see. Uh, did you see the one by Clobrio? And no. it was good. And yeah, it was good. The Brutal Legend remake. 
And oh. I was like, oh my God. And then I realized it's April Fool's and I started crying. I'm like, oh shit, this is the, not real. <laughs> the only one that I saw uh, was uh, on Instagram because I took a nap after I dropped my daughter off at school. Um, <laughs> was Hell Divers. I don't know if it was the community themselves or a, a meme page, but it was saying that they're going to add democracy dollars to, <laughs> to, oh, the, dude, to the game and like also all kinds of overhaul just to point out how much they don't do that. It was really funny. That is good. That is good stuff. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's April Fools. They've been some really good ones. The Dreamcast Mini was excellent, and I'm like, Damn, that needs to be real. That really does need to be real. I got all the, I got all the other minis. I got the Turbo Graphics. I got the Genesis. I got the the Nintendos. Uh, we we need a GameCube Mini, uh, and we also need because that would be kind of dope. And we definitely need a Dreamcast Mini for sure. Uh, yeah. So Sith Lord, thanks so much for that, brother. Super appreciate it. Pardon the sirens if you hear them course the, uh, we're on fire here so uh <laughs> gamer by choice drops a very generous five dollar super chat and says journalists seem to use the playstation narratives to judge success in the industry it reminds me of blockbuster both industry leaders until industry changed that's a phenomenal point i love it that's a very very strong point uh we have jj saying 117 drops a very generous five dollar Super Chat says, hello, hey, boom, happy April Fool's Day. Today, Twitter is a place to avoid because I saw Metroid Prime 4 trailer and Power World patch trailer, and I fell for it. Yeah, me too. I fall for these things. Even though you know that in the back of your mind that there's April Fool's, you just want some of this stuff to be so real. Uh, a shout out to you. Hey, Ultron uh, Man drops an additional very generous $5. Super Chat says, hello, gentlemen, been playing Dragon's Dogma all weekend. And I've never traveled so much in a game, LOL. Yeah, dude, that you are traveling here. Then it's, it's it's crazy. But I, I use the arcs cart and I fall asleep and I get to where I want to get to. Um, I do wish there was more. I know like Pong is and 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 uh Steel Rain are like, yeah, you know, this is the game they wanted to make, so the whole fast travel thing is it's fine. Listen, it's a great game, it's my game of the year. It is so good, and there's DLC coming and I, I I will say I do wish that the fast travel system was a little bit better um, because you do have to find these or buy, you know, these these tokens that you can use and they're one use only mm -hmm. instead of us being, you know, we're all very spoiled and titled gamers. I just want to fast travel when I want to, you know, when I want to fast travel. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's no, it's not the way it is, but um I'll go first to Game Pass, Dad. Uh, let, let me pull up the tweet here because uh, Sarah Bond, who is the president of Xbox, um, is one of the smartest women to walk into any room. Uh, if you've ever heard her speak, and you probably should have many times over, uh, she, in my opinion, is going to eventually be, at least I hope, the successor to Phil Spencer. Uh, she has proven her worth. He gets out there. Uh, she she breaks it down in a very digestible way. She doesn't try to browbeat you with Xbox is the best brand. She gives you what you're asking for as a fan. Um, I don't know her personally. I'd like to meet her. Heck, I'd even like to interview her. I have met Phil Spencer a couple of years ago. Gentlemen, I did get a chance to meet Aaron Greenberg. Uh, I've met, uh, obviously, Jeff Rubenstein. I've met quite a, people, quite a few people. Uh, in Xbox, I just have not had the opportunity to speak with Sarah Bond, and I hopefully that one day that changes. Uh, so what she said in this tweet was simplistic, right? It wasn't a lot to it. It says, so great speaking to hashtag Team Xbox. And it's her in front of a camera. They're filming her in front of a uh, Xbox backdrop. Mm -hmm. uh, what she's filming, I honestly don't know. Uh, but when she says Team Xbox, she is not talking about literally the team at Xbox. She is talking, at least in my opinion, and I could be wrong, and I will, you know, obviously, you know, take my lumps if I need be. She's talking to Team Xbox, meaning, well, the fans. Um, now, there were some suggestions over the weekend, Game Pass, Dad, that this was, you know, getting prepared for the big show in June. I a thousand percent disagree. It's too early. We're only yeah. in now when this was filmed in March, you have April, you have May, you have mid June, you know, the first, like I think it's the like 10th or the 12th. So it's halfway through June. 
they're not going to start filming stuff for that here now. As a matter of fact, why even mention it if it's so far away? I think there's something here, and I don't know if this is going to be a potential another state of Xbox. Is this another direct? Is this, you know, what is it? I think when she says Team Xbox, she is literally talking to the fan base. That is my opinion, but I'm interested, Game Pass Dad, to get yours. Um, I I think it's kind of up in the air a little bit because I mean on one hand like it does have the high production value and it does look a lot like something that they would present to the gamers and like their audience um but at the same time uh, being like a big company like the way I kind of interpreted it when when she said team Xbox is that it like a lot of big corporations like when they do speak to like their company as a whole um like companies I've worked for like they do um like do recorded things like this where it has like production value and stuff like that so i i do think it could be possible that it might just be a company-wide video that they might have produced for like the internal like especially with like the talks that they've been having and working on their vision and everything um so i don't think it's completely out of the question that she literally meant like the team at xbox um because at the same time i'm just not sure what else we would necessarily get right now between now and june which Obviously, we always have that couple month lag where like it is a downtime where we're not getting a lot of new new news or communication directly from Xbox. Um, I, I think it's nice that they're setting a precedent over the last like two years that we get an update at the beginning of the year around February. And then we hear stuff in June and then usually in the fall. Like I feel like that level of communication and transparency is great. I just feel like if there was more coming that we'd have some kind of rumor about what it might be because yeah i would love if they uh if they have some more information for us at the moment but i think i think this is probably most likely something internal from what i can tell um but i'll be pleasantly surprised if it's not and definitely always look forward to see what else they have planned for xbox you know i listen that's a great point it's a great point of view it's a great opinion uh again I don't see for me personally, why put that out to the ether? You know, right. You see, that's the, that's, again, that's, and that's, that's the reason why I question it for sure. Yeah, it's like because, they made it public. Because I mean, look, they have Microsoft teams, they have zoom, right? If they, if they wanted to get, obviously we heard now this is, this is an interesting theory. Okay. And this is okay. So this is kind of segueing, but not really segueing into what Jez Corden had to say. And Jez Corden, Again, for me, tip of the spear when it comes to journalistic integrity. Uh, I'm a big fan of him. I've talked about it before. I like Jez. I know him personally. Uh, I definitely got to get on the Xbox 2 plus one. If you guys are listening, hello. <laughs> like, uh, you know, that would help. It would, it would help the channel, but I would like to hang out with those two guys. I love Rand. And Jez, as a matter of fact, I've been, uh, talked to him over the weekend. Uh, next week, one of the shows, we're trying to figure out what best suits his schedule. So we're going to get Jez Gordon of Open Window Central back on as well. Um, they did have a town hall meeting that leaked. And some things got put out there. Jez Gordon got a couple of, you know, tidbits. Uh, I, I knew about some of the stuff as well. You know, again, I have some small connections. But there was a, a town hall meeting that they didn't talk about. And that was that was recently. That might have been a week ago, might have been two weeks ago about the state of Xbox. A lot of people had questions to, you know, because they have people that work there that work for the company, but they're also fans of Xbox. So I'm sure that they had a lot of questions as, hey, listen, what are we doing with this third party stuff? Is, is everything going over there? What's staying? What's going? You know, is the brand damaged? You know, and, and, and that's a lot of the stuff that he talked about. I'm actually going to play it uh, when we get into that topic. But no one said anything about that. This Game Pass ad and the way it was put out there. And again, Team Xbox could literally mean anything, right? It could yeah. mean the actual team at Xbox, or it could mean, well, we like to consider us, consider ourselves a part of the Xbox team, right? I think I think most of us do anyway. Um, I don't know. I, I do I do like what you're saying, but I also I think you're onto something where you said it, when, when when you put it out there. And it's just plain on paper. It might mean this, but it also might mean something else because obviously she did put it on Front Street. 
And she didn't have right. to do that. So anything else you'd like to add to this conversation, kind sir, before I move on to Fuzzy? No, I think I think I I don't have any more speculation to add, but I mean maybe maybe they're dropping the the handheld like it's hot before we know it. No. <laughs> maybe maybe we're buying PlayStation finally. Who knows? Like it's it's all up from here. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I could I could I agree with you on the handheld thing. What if they yeah, show just... it off in June and they have it ready to go because if, if you remember during that business update Game Pass dad Sarah Bob yeah. specifically did say we have new hardware to share this fall. That's true. And I I do feel like there's a possibility of that. Like part of me, like as far as the handheld's concerned, which I feel like sorry to throw the curveball in there with the, my joke. Oh, no, but... I, I love curveball. <laughs> no, no, listen, brother, this is, this is, a, this is a conversational uh, uh, podcast. Uh, right, she, I know. Uh, and, uh, she, first um, of all, shout out to real quick Sh- Sanchez MTZ Gaming. Brother, you want a $25 gift card. You got to reach out to me either, you know, email me through the business email that's at, that's at the about page on YouTube, DM me or at least message me. And I need two things from you. I need obviously what platform of choice you want your gift card to Xbox, PlayStation or Nintendo. And I need a mailing address so you can get these two very limited, very special edition coins that were created uh, by uh, Ben Kenobi. Of, of Twitter frame and uh, yeah, all, there's only a handful of these coins. One is a Diablo four and one is a call of duty uh, coins and they are very limited and you did win a pair of those. So reach out to me one way or another, but please continue but game past that. Yeah. As far as the handheld announcement goes, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence as to how soon we might get it, which obviously I, I do feel like it could be a good option for mid gen refresh or how exactly they go about it, whether it's like a hybrid dockable system or possible like next generation, like series as console, like as, as much as I feel like it would be an amazing thing if Microsoft has it ready to go in the next, the, either at the end of this year or next year, I feel like it could slot perfectly into that time slot. I, I do feel like so, part of me does feel that at least this generation, it might be that Xbox is allowing um, like the, the development partners like Asus and MSI to take the lead on like the handheld PCs until they could really get it dialed in. So I, part of me wants to say we might not see it until the next generation or a little bit closer to it. Um, but I do feel that if we were like, it is very possible that we could get that kind of announcement because Microsoft has constantly had different versions of different consoles and different form factors in the works. And they, they have a deep, deep talent pool that, could be assigned to working on any any different thing at any given time so um i wouldn't completely rule out like any sort of handheld announcement either mid mid year this year or the end of this year um at least at least for an announcement like that it seems plausible and personally i've been really diving down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what the perfect handheld would be for me because um like i have my console i love my console i do a majority of my gaming on PC and like ultimately I have gotten to a point where just through content creation and like how I use my computer and how I game, like that's just work what works the best for me. And that's why like when we talk about opening up the ecosystem and when games are going to other platforms, I'm not as concerned as other people. I definitely respect like everyone's opinions and like the stress that I can put on the brand, but that's why to me like a a handheld device that can bridge the gap between the pc and also be docked on my entertainment system here um could definitely be a very viable buy for me um but i would really like it to be a more open ecosystem which it makes me happy that phil's talking about those sorts of things of either bringing like like allowing other stores on their platform kind of like they already are on windows where basically microsoft has you like get you to their ecosystem and starting to use their products just by having the operating operating system and selling you the operating system. Um, it, it'd be interesting to see how that's still profitable. But I mean, if I had a handheld and I could play and buy my games on steam, I would still most definitely still be invested in game pass and I would still pay for the $30 upgrade and early access to some of my favorite games or buy the dlc like i would still 
probably buy the I would probably buy more games on Xbox actually if if they did improve the the app interface in and of itself and found a way to bridge that gap to where your Xbox games are guaranteed to be played on PC whether they're Xbox games or otherwise cuz right now those are pretty much the only games I buy through Xbox on PC are like Xbox Game Studios games and usually I don't have to buy the full game because I I have Game Pass but some of them, if they ever were to leave Game Pass for whatever reason, which they're never going to if everything stays the same as it, as it is now, which I don't see any reason why it, it ever would. Um, like, more or less, like, they pretty much have me as a Game Pass subscriber for life at this rate. And I feel if they do fully integrate, because one of, like, I don't know, I can get into my... Because I, not that I don't have any gripes with Xbox, and I feel like it's good for us to admit like what can be improved, so we can oh, continue to give that feedback as well. Yeah, 100%, right. Because because yes. that's the fun thing with all these conversations, or you have the opinion piece that's just a hit piece on Phil. Is all these people are just like, yes, Sony, please take our money, drain us dry. We love it. Uh, we only need one game this year. But you don't hear a lot of those people also saying like, hey, maybe. Uh, Maybe you guys are uh, just trying to get all our money, um, <laughs> which both be, both sides are trying to get your money. But I feel like one side is providing more value. Um, but that that's what would keep me in in the ecosystem. But um, I do feel like the PC app for Xbox does does need a lot of work, and like the game bar and everything needs a refresh. Dude, but if, thousand percent, yes. If they do, if they do integrate, because honestly, some of the last couple updates as well have Im like improved it for me. Like I haven't found myself like grumbling at all about like the its responsiveness or anything. Like it's still not like really instantaneous, but I mean, games are weird and computers. Uh, if you anyone who does PC game, like it does take a little bit more effort, and that is the reason why like. A console or like a, a console experience is better but honestly if xbox does really hone in on the xbox app and basically make it so any pc you're playing on it works just like an xbox i mean that could add a lot of value as well but i mean i've gotten more into modding my games also so i still want to have that ability and things like that which that is a nice thing so it's it's a give and a take and like a push and a pull but um like overall like improving that ecosystem is is going to provide a lot of value and that's why it excites me that they're working on handhelds and all the different factors like that's why a lot of us are probably still xbox gamers it's just like with all the things they've experimented with so far we are seeing all the other things that come with it which is expanding the games to other platforms as well but i i do feel that it's plausible like just with where microsoft's headed that we're gonna see like more information soon um i just don't know at this point um whether or not it's going to be before june it's well it's certainly look I, i'm i'm a hopeful half full glass kind of a guy i would love it uh if they did release it earlier uh and maybe in 2026 they did there's an iteration to it to make it a better uh and obviously yeah. they released that right along with the with the you know with the big box underneath your tv whatever that's going to be called or whatever it's going to look like um yeah folks as you can see this dragon just whooped my ass cowboy style <laughs> multiple times and you know you're gonna see it as a point where i just run from it i'm like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna take the l on this one because i cannot beat this dragon it's fine i'll come back for it another time um yeah i mean listen good great stuff man super super happy to have you here with us game pass that you acted out of the park for sure Fuzzy, <laughs> let, let, let's get into what Sarabon meant by this. Mm -hmm. And I think that Game Pass Dad, from his angle, sounds right. Yeah. Like, we do see these types of presentation, these high production value, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, pointed conversations with staffers, with, you know, quote unquote, the official Team Xbox. Uh, mm -hmm. And I would imagine that if they're going to, uh, you know, do something like this, they do it internally. No, and they do this probably what a hundred times a year. You know what I'm saying? In multiple <laughs> companies, you know, yeah. maybe nah, it's not a hundred, but uh, you know, they'll do this 10, 15, 20 times a year. They'll get in front of a camera. They'll they, there's this this message they want to convey to the you know the people working there. Microsoft's a pretty big company. That's why there's this production value. 
But most of the time, I would say almost 99.9% of the time, we as consumers or as fans of a particular brand never hear of anything like this. Right. He specifically put it out there. And again, I will read, read it verbatim. She simply says, so great speaking to hashtag Team Xbox. And it's a picture of her. Uh, and there's cameramen. Uh, there's her standing in front of a what appears to be an Xbox backdrop of some sorts. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, who is she talking to is the question. And because, again, this you can come at this from any angle. And obviously, you're not necessarily going to be wrong for having your opinion. Unlike right. some people in the chat. Well, one person in the chat seems to think that I don't believe in freedom of speech, which is. Caesar, it's ridiculous already. Let it go. Uh, freedom of speech matters, but when it's packed with falsities and you're trying to skew an audience to believing these lies, it really shouldn't be printed. Why, why should you print that if you know that it's half-truths? Is that okay to print? You're okay with half-truths because it, it fills your narrative? No, then it shouldn't be printed. Why print it if it's packed with lies? That would be propaganda then. That, that, hello? <laughs> yes, it would be propaganda. But let me reel it back in and uh, not go off or for, for, for a particular person who wants to so wants to be so right. It's unbelievable. Uh, no matter how many, how many times you post, brother, it's not going to change my opinion. Keep posting. You, st you know, and eventually if, you, if, you, if you're disingenuous and you're being a problem, you're going to wind up getting banned. So don't do that. And then that won't be freedom of speech. That's we just don't like, you know, people being knuckleheads. Stop being a knucklehead. Uh, but reeling it back in, mm -hmm. um, let's let's talk about this. What what do you think Sarah Bond actually meant? Well, I I, I like a lot of what Game Pass Dad said. It, they are a trillion dollar company, so having the high production value makes sense for that type of you size of company. Um, but her posting it on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it just feels like why would she do that unless it's something pertaining to those that are fans or interested in xbox as a whole like if if it's something that was just internal like uh like maybe it's a uh, uh you know discussing like dress down day on fridays or or you know uh free pizza <laughs> at, at the local cafes in in you know redmond or something she doesn't need to post that on Twitter, or at least in that sense. Like I could see it being like, oh, maybe it's on her Instagram, but like Twitter, it just feels like that was intentionally put in front of the fan base for a reason. And and we kind of saw something like this before, before the whole business update. Because remember, Tina Amini uh, posted something where she was getting something ready, and it was probably geared towards the you know, business update before it was referred to as the business update. And they probably had a certain timeline that they were looking to, you know, release it. And the community kind of imploded on itself. And they were like, yeah, we got to move this up, maybe change the format, make it like a, an open mic podcast kind of thing, uh, or like a little mini round table. But uh, I, I think this is something not necessarily on those same lines, but in the same sense that it's going to be for the fans, but I don't think it's, what we would what we would see in June for their showcase, I think it's something in between that. Now, if it is, yeah. you know, fingers crossed for that handheld, which I'm kind of hoping is sooner rather than later, or at least the announcement of it, so we get a good idea to make sure one, it's you know, plays games natively. It's not a streaming only device. Um, you know, maybe they talk about the pricing so that way. You know, we, we kind of get that, you know, in mind so we could either set aside money or know that, hey, this is a day one buy or might have to wait for a holiday sale kind of thing. Um, and, and things along those lines where you kind of give them a little bit of a heads up. Like we had a whole year and, and probably a year and a half heads up for the Scorpio before it came out, like them talking about the Xbox One X before it was actually released. So I could see a similar thing with a handheld. And where it fits between like maybe a Series X and Series S. Is it like identical to a Series S but portable? Or is it kind of in between a Series S and a Series X? Is it geared to be closer to a Series X but portable? Whatever the case may be, give us like maybe some insight on it. Uh, let us know some of the maybe the, the tech specs of it and that it's geared to be pre-orders in August or November or whatever kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping it's something along those lines, unless, unless it's some of their partnered, 
I guess you would say second party deals that they've made. Like uh, maybe it's an update on contraband. Maybe it's an right. update on that fantasy game that they were working with the uh, IO interactive. Uh, or maybe it's the, uh, the Shaolin uh, uh, gang oh, dude, or game yes, with, from uh, Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, oh it, it can be a number of things. And, and that's the amazing part. Kind of like when we hinted earlier about the whole roadmap thing, knowing that there's a lot of things that they have in front of them between now and, the next five plus years, they need to figure out where to kind of squeeze these events in and squeeze this information out at. Um, so I, I think it's something relating to that, either some of those games I mentioned, or maybe even games that we don't even know about because they have some of those deals in the, in the background. Like Sarah's talked about working with like 40 plus studios in, you know, like the, the, uh, uh, Asian region as far as like with like uh, South Korea as well as Japan and yep. some developers in China even. So it's like they have a lot of things in the works. There's so many moving parts as far as studios that they're partnered with, uh, things that they're in the process of either producing or, you know, in, in uh, endorsing to some extent with their ID at Xbox stuff as well. Um, maybe it's something along those lines, but kind of hoping more so for the, the handheld conversation uh, just because like if if that thing is going to have also what we had talked about before with like Steam or Epic Game Store access, that and I, I've I've probably joked about this all weekend where it's like that would have been the perfect device to save the Xbox One name for. At that yeah, point, I you should call that, that Xbox times. One. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it it just feels like the handheld is kind of like that device that we didn't know we wanted, but now that we get more info about it, it's like we, I wouldn't say we couldn't live without, but it would be like, yeah, that that's going to be the go-to device moving forward because you could, you know, set it in a dock and connect it to your TV or take it on the road with you or sit on the couch when the, the, the primary console in your household might not be usable and you don't feel like streaming and just have it where it's like a, a you know, seamless transition from console to the handheld and if you have a PC from the handheld back to your PC, if you're at the desk or, or vice versa kind of thing. But uh, I, I think something's coming up. It's probably game related because they got a lot of games in the works. Uh, a lot of stuff is cooking. Uh, so they like Matt Booty said before, they, they're going to have a tough time figuring out how they, you know, announce or, or mention these games <laughs> before release and stuff like that and figuring out when they'll drop. Uh, but there's also uh, the potential of, you know, new hardware. And even if it's just the, you know, discless Series X, because we've seen some of that stuff as well, they, right. they might want to let people know because if it is $100 less and, you know, the pr we've seen how low the pricing has dropped on the Series X during the holidays, that might be that, that enough of that push for the people that were kind of on the fence that were going to wait for Hellblade 2 or may have wanted to wait until a vow drops or Indiana Jones. And it's like, you know what, let me pick this up now. See what this game pass is about that. Everybody keeps on saying is the, the greatest value in gaming. And then, you know, they find out and get hooked on it type of thing. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's probably game related, but if it's hardware related, I'm hoping it's the handheld over the, you know, the all digital series X, but any way you look at it, I'm expecting something here, something soon within probably the next month or so from, from Xbox and not, you know, waiting until the June showcase. So we'll, we'll see. What if it's the, uh, the Hellblade two direct. Mm, a deeper dive kind of a thing. That, deeper that dive too. because <laughs> that could come the way of mid April. You think, and yeah. obviously it's releasing in may. No one <laughs> made mention of, it. and I'm sitting to listen to you guys talking. I'm like, wait a second. Maybe, maybe it's, I mean, who knows at this point? Look, at the end of the day, <laughs> she's doing something. And I do think that it, if she didn't, look, if Xbox didn't want us to know that something was potentially on the way and they didn't want speculation to start happening, they wouldn't put this out there for us to, 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 to talk about. It's right. out there. She put it out there. She's notorious for, for, for interacting with the community. It's what makes who she is, uh, why we like her. Uh, and mm -hmm. why she's a great leader for Xbox as being, you know, obviously, and why she was promoted to the president yeah. of Xbox, uh, which eventually may lead to running, well, what Phil Spencer is currently doing. Uh, and that's definitely a possibility considering, uh, you know, with her T-Mobile roots and what she did prior to joining Xbox. Yeah. Um, but look, at the end of the day, 
great conversation. We don't know. I, I, I put it to this way. There is a lot to still get excited about for Xbox, regardless of how many hit pieces people want to put out there. If you are a fan of the brand for one reason or the other, whether it's because you value Game Pass, whether you've been an OG for years and you're an Xbox fan and you've just been uh, enjoying the brand. However, you're just finding the brand for the first time and you're like, wow, this, this Xbox does. I actually saw a lot of chatter with people just buying an Xbox over the weekend and specifically talking about Gears of War. Oh, I can't believe it. I never played Gears of War before. And this, I mean, wow, okay, yeah, that, that's that's awesome that you found Xbox now and you're playing Gears of War. Uh, hopefully, you know, obviously this fall, you know, may, maybe we'll get more information in June that we do get the rumored Phoenix, Marcus Phoenix collection, which we dope, like a done real, you know, redone in Unreal Engine 5. That would be another phenomenal title added to the already ridiculous list of games coming out this year. Um, but real quick, uh, Gray Fox drops a very generous five pound super chat and he says, Hello, boom. Did you see any improvements with Dragon's Dogma after today's patch? Greetings from uh, uh from Amsterdam. Oh, wow, dude, from the Netherlands. Thank you so much, man. That is awesome that you're checking out the show all the way from the other side of the world. That is so cool. Welcome, brother. Uh, Xbox marketing in Europe in Europe sucks, by the way. Yeah, duh, they need they their marketing is just terrible i i don't i don't even know i have not gotten the call folks no one has called for boom to, for that for that six-figure job at, at microsoft which i guarantee you if i get a marketing job there you're going to find marketing everywhere but they're not calling this old bastard so it's fine it's fine uh Kiasante, generous friend of the program who's been a channel member for 23 months says freedom of speech has limits you can't scream fire in a building and as a news publication you can't publish lies and claim uh freedom of speech there you go well said i probably should have said that from the beginning and, so, and not tolerated the the shenanigans uh general spartan 27 who's been a channel member for 11 months dude thank you so much for the outstanding support. He says this, if Microsoft has their handheld and next-gen consoles have games for every Xbox generation plus Steam Epic Game Store, they would have a massive library with Game Pass. Yeah, I listen, that's happening. Uh, Phil Spencer saying it isn't just Phil Spencer, eh, you know, I'm just going to go out there and just name drop Epic Game Store or, or, um, or Steam. They're working with them right now. That is happening. That is going to be a reality on your next console. And I keep saying this, and this is where people that are, you know, listen, PC, the P PCMR, we understand that most people play on PC and they want choice. Game Pass, Dad plays on PC, Fuzzy plays on PC. Most of the people, circles that we roll in play on PC, I don't. And I think that I like to use myself as a test subject. Um, I have seen many games on Steam that someone will like name drop me or DM me like, hey, boom, you got to check out this game. It's like Vampire Survivor, but better. And I go to look for the game and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, it's only on Steam. Well, I'm not playing because I don't play on my PC. I just don't because my PC is good and Mrs. Booms is way better. She's rocking a 4060 in her in her Alienware. She can play anything she wants. She's also not a big PC, per, you know, PC player. Uh, it's fine. Um, but Here's the difference. Steam doesn't care where their money comes from as long as their coffers are filled. So if I could buy a game from Steam to play on my new Xbox, that makes me a customer that they never had before. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there like me who play specifically on console because that is where we enjoy gaming. That is new customers. You think Gabe Newell is going to care? Where the money is coming from? No, he is absolutely not going to care. So, again, I just use myself as a test subject, but I do want to move on to the final topic. And we're going to spend about 15 or 20 minutes and we'll get everyone out of here because, again, this is one of the, the shorter shows of the week. Uh, Jess Corden out there, you know, making the rounds, you know, uh, you know, uh, and uh, again, what, what the what, what you what your opinion on Jez is? Well, my opinion is a very high one. I like Jez Corden a lot. He knows that uh, on and we I, all right. So before we even get into what Jez Corden had to say, I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, these posts come the way of Idle Sloth. He is a phenomenal uh, Twitter user consistently 
putting out great content uh, on 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 Twitter, giving us these updates. Uh, they, you know, people call it. You've been slothed. Uh, I've been slothed once or twice. Kaysante, who's going to laugh, he's in the chat right now, has been slothed about the the Xbox uh, um, uh, Starfield controller. Um, but what happened over the weekend uh, is Jez Corden uh, was on the Xbox Two podcast, as he is on a weekly basis. And uh, he said, uh, according to Idle Sloth, uh, Jez Corden heard that Matt Booty acknowledged that there are multiple platform strategies, uh, th- that the multi- multiple platform strategy has stressed but not damaged the Xbox brand. Jez also paraphrasing just because it is not a direct source, but someone he's heard secondhand. Um, now, this comes on the way uh, of, of the heels of this town hall meeting that we talked about where people that work for Xbox had an opportunity to question Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, and, and more specifically, Matt Booty, who was, who was there. Um, and um, I'm going to read verbatim from the first tweet. Uh, Idle Sloth put out there, Jess Corden has heard that Microsoft had an all-hands-on meeting recently with Phil Spencer. They discussed the future of X- what, the X- what the future of Xbox looks like and discussed the rumors of going third party. Phil said that these decisions that we, th- that we take today are about ensuring Xbox's future, not for years, but for decades to come. And Xbox will be stronger in the years slash decades to come. And he specifically said that includes hardware. He goes on to say in this tweet, Idle Sloth, also, an Xbox higher up recently DM'd Jez saying that there's a lot of things that we do wrong at Microsoft and that there's a lot of things that we would change. And there are a lot of things that maybe I understand people being worried about. But there is one thing you shouldn't worry about, and that is the commitment to gaming. And finally, according to Jez in this uh, Xbox Two uh, uh, podcast, there has been a disruption in the brand, and part of that disruption is how costs have grown in recent years. Everything has gotten more expensive, and that's why they uh, they put Sea of Thieves on PlayStation. Rare has no cash flow apart from Sea of Thieves, and with expenses going up, especially in the UK, Brexit slash COVID adding another revenue stream to see if thieves is crucial. I mean, it's again, I, I trust that this is not coming out from nowhere. Uh, fuzzy Belvedere. Um, this is uh, again, you know, Xbox two podcast, one of the best podcasts specifically to cover Xbox out there. Um, uh, and, uh, what, what are your thoughts on what Jez had to say during this live show? Well, it's it's pretty interesting as far as um, the internal talks that they've had, as far as you know, some of the recent uh, business dealings that they've done, and and how that you know has affected maybe some of their momentum and and some of the you know conversation uh, within the company. Like as much as people would like to say, oh, it's you know just fanboys on Twitter. When you're at a company and there's a certain or or, or sudden shift or change in the business direction. Um, sometimes people start wondering if certain things might, uh, be scaled back as far as their jobs. I mean, considering the gaming industry has been one that's been hit the hardest as far as, uh, layoffs and, and closures and such, you can understand some people being, uh, you know, internally a little bit concerned. So having that, that conversation is to be expected and, and, you know, a company that wants to retain their talent and, and put them at ease and, you know, make sure that they dispel any, you know, grumblings inside their walls. It, it's good to have those, you know, town hall type meetings and things like that. Yeah. But um, I, I would say in the grand scheme of things, they, it's probably better for them to talk about it as opposed to like I've, I've been at companies where they talk about stuff like that. And I've been at companies where they try to keep everything silent. And then you see uh, some of the CEOs or the higher ups selling shares and going on vacation and then not returning from vacation kind of thing. So uh, it, it it works a, a number of different ways. But I think with Xbox, I think they're trying to, you know, their normal selves. They're trying to innovate, move things forward, seeing how the market is is changed to some extent. Like um, I think it was uh, uh, like Double Mellow was like 
what you were saying from uh, the podcast on Friday, uh, or no, was it no Saturday? Saturday yeah. Um, where the 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 customer base for for gaming has kind of changed. Like, yes, there's a lot of us old heads out there that are dinosaurs when it comes to consoles or even PC for that matter. But you know, the under 35 crowd, a lot more, maybe so the under 24 crowd are gaming on their mobile phones. They could care less about, you know, 4K resolution, just as long as it's either on their phone or their tablet, wherever they want to take it. It's, it's you know, quick and easy, not, not like having to jump through hoops and go through a billion launchers type of thing. That's where the market's moving and, and they have to kind of catch that market before that becomes the majority of the market, if it isn't already. So it's it's all understandable. I, I like that Jez kind of, you know, at least he gets multiple, you know, inbound sources as far as confirming, okay, not just one person saying that this is happening inside because you could always catch that disgruntled employee and make blow things out of proportion or from their perspective, the, the sky is falling. But if you have like a number of employees saying, yeah, there was a meeting, it's not really public knowledge, but some of the stuff that was talked about was this, this, and this, and and bringing it to light is to be expected. But I, I, I think overall, Xbox in general, uh, moving forward, is poised to still be relevant 10 years, 20 years from now. Um, as far as uh, hardware, we know that hardware is still in the works. As far as games, there's still a ton of games in the pipeline. Um, but I guess the big thing now is getting everything in front of the customer base, exp- you know, growing the business, finding new customers, and how to find those new customers without completely pissing off your current customers yes. at the same time. And that's that's yep. probably the hardest balance for any company out there. Um, and so far, yeah, they've they've probably lost a, a handful. We've seen some meltdowns on on social media in regards to that. But uh, all things aside, um, I, I think if you're into gaming at some point, whether you sold your Xbox and bought a PlayStation or you, you bought a PC because you're tired of the console BS kind of thing, you're, you're still going to have access to the games. You're still going to be able to access those games with the direction that they're trying to move forward, whether you do it through a browser, do it through your phone, do it through your TV or the next gen console, whatever the case may be. I, th- I think that's where they're headed. And, you know, we all got to, I guess, kind of get prepared for that. And, and some of the benefits that come along with that, with more of an open store, like the stuff we talked about earlier with steam and, and, you know, Epic and stuff. So I, I, I think they're in a good spot now. It's, it's good that they are at least acknowledging some of the stuff that, you know, maybe the rake or two that they stepped on in the process though. Yeah. I mean, but you know what? I, I think what, what jumps off the page for me, fuzzy is that they're listening. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? They're not corpo. Uh, we don't give a flying, you know what, about what you think, just pay us. They, you know, they have having these conversations, having that business meeting, understand that they, they, they heard what people were saying. They heard, what was going on in social media. You can't mm-hmm. say that for Sony. You cannot say that for Nintendo. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's and that's the difference. Uh, Game Pass Dad, let's close out this particular topic and the show all together, but I do want to get your opinion on this. What, what, what are your thoughts on what Jez Gordon had to say during the Xbox 2 podcast regarding this, this town hall meeting and that, Matt, you know, Matt Booty actually, you know, he, he, again, he was quoted in saying, and again, I, did, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I'm going based on what was said. That they believe that yes, the brand the brand was stressed, uh, and obviously it was, but it wasn't damaged. I don't necessarily know so much about that. But it's not my opinion. I think the brand was damaged a bit. Um, how damaged? Well, I don't have a scale, but I can say that there's a lot of OG Xbox players that stepped away from the brand because of it. Now, is that going to hurt it ultimately? Well, I don't know. Um, but what what are your what are your takes on on, on this final uh, topic? Yeah, I I mean, I feel like the the stress to the brand is probably a lot in line with like what we those of us who pay attention to Twitter um <laughs> and what's going on in that space, like all the things that happen, like I mean for me like that like I mean I ended up making a video about all the craziness cuz it was so kind of disturbing to me like <laughs> how we got to that point. 
Um, and I can understand completely um, for those who, and I, I try hard to make sure that when I am speaking strongly about these things, that I do understand where people are coming from. Like we are investing our money in these platforms in hopes that we will always retain ownership of our games. Like we're trusting Microsoft to go down a digital path. Therefore we don't have to have the little trinket taking up space on our shelf uh, to make sure that we continue to have ownership and control, which over time with technology, like that has been something that we've had to kind of accept. And the reason why game Pass is like a modern option for gaming is it, kind of takes out a lot of the the need to put that level of investment in um but i think that's the major part and that's where like someone like yourself i'm sure would say it's damaged um i feel like for some people like it it is a direction that is completely like unforgivable and they those people have chosen to decide how they want to approach the platform or whether or not they want to make content around the platform or where they want to play their games or whether they want to decide to evolve and stop investing in Xbox and buy a PC. But ultimately I do feel that though there's stress, like I feel like it is stress on the brand because again, like, like I've said before, the things we talked about before, even today, um, the, the gaming industry is moving in a different direction. Like, I don't think Microsoft would be making these decisions if they felt that they could continue to be profitable or make money and be relevant in a business just by creating gaming consoles. Cause I mean, honestly, the thing that it makes me think about when we have these conversations is like, think about <clears throat> where gaming consoles came from, like the dedicated box that you keep underneath your TV in order to play games because at the time like back in the 80s like back in the 70s like computers weren't the type of thing that you could just keep on your desk like even in like the nintendo 64 era i remember reading a like article about like the devices that they like the dev kits for the n64 were literally like double size like pc towers the size of like a pac-man machine like that cost like tens of thousands of dollars just for a dev kit where now it's like PCs are getting to a point where it is more expensive than a console in a lot of cases to have like a high powered PC. But even for something that'll play games the same as your console can play, the prices there are at a point where they're very comparable. And not only that, but I feel like during the age of like the iPhone coming out, we saw a point in time where consumers were carrying around like their cell phone their music player and their gps like every other device was separate but yep. it is natural for technology to consolidate and move forward and consoles existed at a time where we didn't have easily affordable personal computers let alone very powerful personal computers in all of our pockets so I do feel like there's some companies that have tried to make that jump to mobile earlier than what is realistic, but in like the next 10 to 20 years, it is very obvious that these are platforms that if they do open up the way, cause also you have to take in mind, not just the, the where technology is going, why it's working that way, but also the regular regulatory functions that we saw a lot of last year and the year before, when we're talking about the, abk merger like how these governing bodies look at the way that these ecosystems work and whether or not they are in support of holding up the walled garden for all these platforms eventually we could live in a world where the phone in your pocket might even be allowed to have an app on it that can run these games natively and you might be able to take your phone on the go or like definitely handhelds make sense but like it also makes me think that like i think i brought it up last friday on xbox ultimate it's like we're gonna get to a point also where we're not gonna want to have to have like a nintendo switch and an xbox handheld and our cell phone and uh playstation handheld like if if you can get as much of that in one place i as possible whoever yeah. does it the best is going to be a strong presence in that market that is developing. And 
<clears throat> it's very obvious to me, at least, at least when I look at all the factors in the gaming space, like look at the success of the Nintendo Switch, which has sold 140 million devices. Yep. It's very obvious to me. And just the fact I own a Switch, I barely play it, but I like my Switch. I have a Switch. I mainly have it just to play Nintendo games with my friends. And now my daughter's getting old enough that she's like, well, her first gaming platform wasn't even the Switch. It's a tablet because she couldn't yes. understand controls, exactly. which that's the other portion. I'm, I know I'm kind of a beautiful mining this, bringing the strings together, but like that's another factor that we have to take into account. But it's like I own a Switch because... I like what they did. I, I wanted to have it. It was technology that I had to get because Switch Nintendo was the first one to do it, and they completely turned around their business model with that. And <clears throat> I don't feel... Because someone said on Twitter the other day, or I think it might have been in the chat of Xbox podcast that... Um, or some podcast. I can't remember who I was watching, but someone said in the chat, or I think it was uh, Fuzzy's podcast last night with 3-Bit, um, they were talking about um, how Xbox just can't compete because there's already a lot of competition. There's a lot of companies already providing that service, but it's like, it's very apparent where Phil's mind is that he wants to bring the Xbox experience to the handheld, but yeah. also find a way to open it up. Cause I mean, I'm still going to be on the fence of buying an Xbox dedicated handheld if it's not necessarily uh, like a mobile windows machine as well, where I can play those other games. So I would like to see that. I'm not sure how they're going to implement it. And I understand there's hurdles still to cross, but I'm going to adopt a handheld form factor at some point in the next two years, whether it's Xbox or like a rogue ally or a Legion, who knows? But I, this is where the market's going. This is how I want to play my games. I would love to like be playing on my PC. And when I get tired at night, like take it upstairs and go to bed and like sit and play games for a little bit. Cause that's already what I do on on cloud gaming with my phone like that would be an awesome oper like an awesome experience but not only is it where the existing market seems to be heading but like my daughter's generation the generations that are coming up after that like she's five years old um to her the xbox is just a netflix machine because that's all we do when she's here is watch netflix on the xbox for me i still have the xbox because like i play forza um i play like the console games that are on game pass like that don't come to pc game pass which is another part of the <clears throat> another part of the parody disparity that i bring up as far as like the pc experience versus the xbox experience is there's some game pass titles for, especially from like third parties that just aren't made for pc um so at that point it's like that's where i fill in that gap and i still have the device that's connected to my tv but it's like this is an old tv that's like 1080p i don't necessarily need it to be the series x really like <laughs> or actually i think this one is 4k but it's only 4k like 60. um so it's like i'm not getting the most out of this particular experience compared to like my PC. So having a handheld device that's dockable or possibly just hooking up an older Xbox or just being happy with this for the next 10 years, like this is going to last. So I feel like moving into that next generation of customers um, who grow up like interfacing with tablets more than consoles, like the push towards the, the handheld interface or the handheld space, as well as everything, every other choice that microsoft is making right now as far as the ecosystem not necessarily the like i but at the same time like i know the cross platform is the biggest stress to the brand honestly that is the biggest stress but it's not as important to me if it's not tentpole titles and i don't feel like like i do feel this was a test i do feel like there is potential for more to come but I don't feel like they're completely throwing the baby out with the bathwater because it's not like they're going day and date on PlayStation. Like this, this is a possibility of like, because think about it. Like you get PlayStation gamers. Like once we have Call of Duty in Game Pass, and PlayStation gamers are like, I'm buying Call of Duty every single every single year, or I'm buying all these games, and I I see these Xbox games on my PlayStation that are good experiences. I had to pay. $60 for this one, $40 for this one, $70 for this one, whatever it is, eventually they're going to look over at Game Pass and be like, that that seems like a pretty cool thing. I wish I could tap into that somehow. 
And if we can, if we can meet them at multiple levels, especially I see a handheld to me, like more so than a series S, cause I feel like it's less forgivable because of the series S being a console that it is slightly less like that. It's like, just doesn't have the ability to put out the 4k, but, and but essentially, like, I feel like that's why it's dogged so much. But if it's like a handheld form factor that you can take with you, and I know Fuzzy has said it before, a similar power level uh, to the Series S or, or whatever the S profile will be for, like, the next generation, like, no one can really dog that if you have a full console in your pocket that is completely synergistically and intrinsically part of the xbox experience and ecosystem yep. i see something like that because for me like the playstation portal was a, a letdown because if playstation portal could play native games i would yes. really consider buying one and that me could too, very much immediately get yeah. me into their ecosystem yes. so when i because i look at it from like what do i like as a gamer same way as why i appreciate how phil looks at things as a gamer like i don't just see playstation go playstation bad i just see playstation i go playstation not providing experiences that make sense to me so i could very much see that if there is the value proposition of like a whatever it might be a $400 Xbox handheld that is directly tapped into that market and providing the experience. And even if it's just them subscribing to game pass that adds to consistent revenue for the Xbox brand, as well as like the walled garden. But even if it has access to other platforms, like it's still an excuse to always pay for game pass. And that might be enough for, for Microsoft. And I feel like that could be enough to make some of those gamers make that jump, especially if they do also have those amazing PCs that they always rub in our faces, you know, like it just, it just makes sense to me when I think about it. Like, yeah, I have to, like, I don't, I don't feel like there's really that much mental gymnastics. And I, I feel like there's other issues and other difficulties that Microsoft is working through and the growing pains of bringing all these studios and publishers together there's other things that we could be focused on talking about aside from just uh like <laughs> like the fact that microsoft decided to bring games to playstation like that i don't think that's as big of a worry as like some of the other things that we could possibly focus on so like i feel i feel it's all in service of figuring out how this affects the brand as a whole and ultimately testing out how they want to move forward with their, their form factor, their ecosystem and their IP. I mean, dude, phenomenal points all around. Uh, I, I, I love, I love the aspect of, and I'm right there with you. If the PlayStation portal would have been uh, uh, an actual onboard download your games to it, I would have bought it. Yeah, but it is now. It's, I, I personally, again, I've held it. I've used it. It's great. Right. I mean, it's phenomenal, but it do, it does not work for me. I sit I, if I'm going to sit on my couch. I'd yeah. Rather play the 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 the, the, the high the high the high value TV that I bought last year. Um, but it's just again, it's just not enough. Yeah, like. No, <laughs> no I mean, again, uh, the, 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 my perfect handheld for Xbox, very simple. Play like the Switch. Play it. Turn it on. You get an Xbox screen, you, you get tiles, you, you get a dashboard that's like your console. You pick a game, you play, you can download games to it uh, natively, which is great. Uh, 400, maybe 450, give or take, is, is, is to me a $400 price point. If it's exactly what Phil was saying during that Polygon interview, I'm in day one. But look, let me catch up on these last two Super Chats and we'll get everyone out of here. Big thank you to Dream... To uh to Game Pass Dad as well of course as to Fuzzy Belvedere I was supposed to run the Valari commercial I forgot it's fine we'll do it tomorrow uh shout out to FBI agent in the chat who drops a very generous two dollar super chat and says Xbox lacks direction and excitement Phil has to go I mean listen brother you are entitled to your opinion I think there's a lot to get excited about especially with the changes coming in the way of potentially getting a Steam and an Epic Game Store on your next Xbox. I think that is a really big change. I think that the, the another directional change is exactly what we spent the last half hour talking about. That's the handheld. That is a That's a really big deal because they're going to, what they're attempting to do is get the old dogs like us 
to buy into this new handheld, but also bring in a younger community. Like, of course, um, Game Pass Dad's daughter, for instance. Perfect example. She plays handheld because she grew up using a tablet. That is what she is probably going to use. Uh, a lot of these tweens, you know, 13, 14, 15, that are playing on their phones, that are playing on their tablets, might be interested in playing on Xbox. And Xbox is going to have a lot of games to play on top of already having the ability to play Fortnite and to play Apex Legends and all these other free-to-play games. You can now play Halo. You can play all these other games. They may get tap into uh, an audience that never had an Xbox, but they now might because of a portable. It's 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 all uh, all again. For me, it's very exciting. But brother, thank you so much for the generosity. Appreciate you being here. Uh, lastly, JJ saying one one seven drops a very generous additional two dollar super chat and says, "Did the lawsuit against Apple brought uh, brought bring this up?" I I I'm not sure, dude. Honestly, um, it's I'll put it to this way. Microsoft is helping Epic Games in that lawsuit, and I think they're, they, they've already had a, a, an established uh, thing with Gabe Newell and Steam. I think what we've heard Phil talk about wasn't him just, you know, kind of just shooting the breeze. He, that's actually going to happen. If he says that this is what he wants, I would imagine in the next Xbox, it's going to be an open platform allowing for something like Steam and uh, Epic Game Store to exist. But Game Pass... Uh, Game Pass Dad, let's let's sell your brand, brother. Tell everyone <laughs> where they can subscribe to your YouTube channel. What else you got going on? And more importantly, where can people find you on social media? Yeah, boom. Big thanks to you and everyone here at Double Barrel Gaming in the chat hanging out uh, for welcoming me in and listening to all my uh, crazy theories and ideas. <laughs> um, I am a stand-up comedian, and I stream on Twitch Wednesdays and weekends. That's under Game Pass Dad. But I have been, like I said, working hard on uh, bringing more of my opinions about Xbox and gaming back to YouTube here, which is ultimately what I what I started my content journey with. So it's been a lot of fun doing more podcasting. So if you guys enjoy anything that I have to say or uh, any of my sense of humor, things like that, uh, go ahead and follow me on YouTube. Um, I've been working on being more consistent with the videos, so I hope you enjoy them. Usually I make a lot of shorts content also, um, but you can find that on YouTube or you can always follow me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter. I'm there a lot. I used to meme a lot more, but now I just kind of post whatever, but you'll find me uh, memeing on Xbox. And that's that's where Game Pass I got started was uh, PlayStation versus Xbox memes when the consoles released. So yeah, you can follow me on on Twitter. Wednesdays and weekends on Twitch. If you ever want to hang out over there, I'm trying to stream more on YouTube, but uh, trying to find that balance because I'm doing more IRL comedy these days as well. Um, but usually on Fridays, you can also find me on the Fun Speculation Podcast, uh, keeping Fuzzy in line because he gets too crazy sometimes. <laughs> but um, but I make my rounds. But usually Fridays is my my landing place when I'm not busy. So thanks again for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, thank you for joining us, brother. Super appreciate that. And Fuzzy Belvedere, let's sell your brand, kind sir. Tell everyone where they can subscribe to the best place for anything and everything in the racing genre, as well as what else you got going on. And more importantly, where can people follow you on social media? Oh, as always, thank you for having me on Boom. And it was awesome having Game Pass Dad on here today as well. Always love being on podcasts with him, whether it's on the shop or even Xbox Ultimate always a crack up as far as and and not just a crack up as far as you know the the side comments but like i like his perspective as far as he he takes more of a a like a, a well thought out look between pc and console and, yep. and just the games and the enjoyment in general so if you haven't already definitely follow his content uh, you know follow him on twitter or instagram definitely uh you know check what he has to say on on social media uh, and for those that want to hear my rambles and rants on anything gaming related just follow me on the app, formerly known as Twitter at fuzzy underscore Belvedere. You can also find me on Fun Speculations channel later on tonight for FSP at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then everybody in the chat, hope to see you guys here Friday morning at 10 for Breakfast with Boom right here on this channel. Hope to see you then. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this week's new episode of the Xbox Lunch Break Special. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. Hopefully you enjoyed the content enough to hit the like button on your way out the door. And more importantly, if you are finding 
the channel for the first time, we would consider uh, your, 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 you subscribing would be, we'd be very, uh, very happy to add you to the Double Barrel Gaming family. We are a small channel. We are currently on the hunt to 15,000 subscribers. We've been doing YouTube for six years. This November 1st or November 3rd, I believe it is, uh, for the, from the first time I did a video. It's an awful video. It is the worst video I've ever done. And guess what? It's still up so you can point and make fun of me. It's terrible, but I keep it. And every now and again, I go back and I watch it to see, you know, for perspective. So, of course, consider subscribing. I do do uh, five live shows per week, Monday through Friday. All different shows, all different panels. All great content. We never hate monger or try to sell you on click baitery to get you in to subscribe. And again, the biggest thing for me, at least for as a content creator, we do not drive a hate narrative at all. Uh, I said it before and I'll say it again. If that is how you can succeed on YouTube, I will quit the business because I don't like being hateful. And I think that there's too much of this, too much ugliness in this world. To kind of put content out there like that so we laugh we joke sometimes we get pointed sometimes we have difference of opinions but again this is what we do here in double barrel gaming and of course a big thank you to all of the super chats and of course the new channel members uh we can't do the big giveaways we just did one almost 300 worth of giveaways for on friday's breakfast of boom for our annual now easter show uh, and that's, of course, we have some really big ones happening at the end of the year. The big one for Christmas, uh, we upped the ante thanks to Mrs. Booms. Uh, you know, she, know how, she knows how to crunch the numbers. We're giving away this December, folks, $2,000 in two hours. It's the most that we've ever given away at any one time. Last year, we upped the ante by $500. We gave away $1,500 in two, in two hours this year. We are adding five hundred dollars to that, and we can't do any of these big, big giveaways without the generosity of you. And we obviously are humbled by your generosity, and we are incredibly thankful. But of course, before we get on out of here, I'm going to close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully, one day it'll be important to you, and that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, "Craig, treat others how you want to be treated," and also, it doesn't cost anything. To be nice, you live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of the Xbox Lunch Break Special. Hey.